it took her only one week once she got to California to end up getting this job. And you don't know how many letters I wrote to people that's associated with them trying to help her get to where she is right now. But you know about destiny. This call is from a federal prison. It's intended to happen that way. When you hear these pre-recorded messages that come in that remind you that you're on the phone with someone who's in prison, why do you think they do that? When you have a loved one in prison, you're in prison as well. For most of their lives, Michelle and Mikkel West's relationship as mother and daughter has unfolded with prison bars between them. And yet, they're closer than most. It's been Michelle's dream come true to see her daughter become a stylist who's worked everywhere from Sex in the City to Revolt TV. Mikkel's own dream, to see her mother free, isn't yet a reality, but she's working hard to give it life. In fact, when I sat to speak with her, Mikkel was about to fly to Washington, D.C. as a guest of the White House with one mission and one message. I'm here fighting for clemency for my mom. She is serving two life sentences in 50 years. The clemency situation is because there is violence in her case, but she wasn't the gunman. The gunman was granted immunity for telling on my mom's drug conspiracy charges. So he never served any time, and my mom is serving all the time. On May 3rd, 1993, Michelle West was arrested on charges including drug possession with intent to distribute and aiding and abetting a drug-related murder. Michelle had no priors, pled not guilty to all charges, and as a point of fact in her case, personally committed no act of violence. On June 15, 1994, she was found guilty and sentenced to two life prison terms plus 50 years in federal prison. No physical evidence was ever found during raids on Michelle's home. No drugs, paraphernalia, or money. She was found guilty almost entirely in the testimony of the person who committed the murder. And so, because she was found to be part of a conspiracy, she is serving the time for the murder the informant committed. Over 20 years later, Michelle is still in penitentiary while the informant walked free. Michelle's case is dramatic and memorable, making headlines then and drawing the attention of clemency crusaders now. And for Mikkel, every moment of this story still feels fresh. I remember that day as if it happened two hours ago. My, I got up for school. My mom, she, she probably fixed the breakfast. And then we get in the car and we're off on the road and we're working on spelling words. We head to school, she drops me off, she gives me a kiss and she never picks me up. How old are you right now? I'm 10, I'm 10 years old. Mikkel's grown up with her mother serving the sort of mandatory minimum sentence that American society has begun reevaluating of late, a mission that, for Mikkel, feels all too personal. Do you think that there is fairness in the sentence that your mother is serving? No, it's not fair. You know what I'm saying? My mom, my mom was, a, she wasn't perfect. You know, she's not perfect. The drug thing is one thing. For the um, gunman, he can snitch or tell his story first, he goes free. Technically speaking, the trigger man walks away from becoming a witness and testifying, admitting to his murder but then testifying against other people and thereby being exonerated, whereas people like your mother are being sentenced. And that's, is that what our system wants? The first person, is that how, we, how we're operating? The first person who tells goes free? Because that's how it sounds to me. And it's not like it happens with my mom, it happens with everyone. And then what are we really saying? Do we really care about the, the, the gentleman that passed away? We, we don't really, really truly care, because if we care, then the person that killed him should still do some time for it. He really walked. Initially, my mom was offered 20 years. She has served 23. So at this point in my life, I feel like it's time served. Your mother was offered a deal to cooperate, but she chose not to take that deal in part out of fear for what could happen to you right. on the outside. Right. What does that say about your mother? It says that my mom feels like I'm a priority and that I'm important. That's why I love my mom, you know? Because my mom is strong. She walked away instead with the 20 years, she walked away with three life sentences in 50 years. To me, that feels like her life, my life, and my unborn child. 
By not plea bargaining for a reduced sentence, Michelle held steadfast to her claim of innocence and also may have sought to keep Mikkel from vengeful people on the streets. Because as Michelle told me on a call from prison, she's always operated with her daughter's best interests in mind. It's never been about me, it's about her. It's, a, it's always been about her, you know, because, because I had my daughter, the day that I gave birth to her, that's when I had a moral uh, responsibility to take care of her. To the day she died, I'd give up my life for my daughter. And that's what, if that's what it took, that's what it took. Despite the considerable disadvantages Mikkel's face as the child of an incarcerated parent, she's beat the odds, breaking a cycle of incarceration which often befalls people in her situation. It's an issue that transcends politics, and one that I discussed with Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. Revolt to Vote here at Revolt TV, we're having Criminal Justice Reform Week, and we're going to be rolling out a story about a child of an incarcerated parent who worked hard to break the cycle and has made something of herself. She's now working as a stylist here at Revolt. What are, what's an award of advice that you could give to children of incarcerated parents to help them be encouraged to break that cycle? Well, first of all, thank you. You know, when we talk about 2.2 million people in jail, you know what we forget to talk about? The families. What about the children? And I think the point that you are making, which is a tragedy, is that many of the kids of people who went to jail follow in their parents' footsteps. And we gotta break that cycle. And that means that as a society, we have to be, pay special attention. You know, if you are a kid and your dad is in jail and your mom is stressed out, that child needs special attention. And the goal must be that we do everything that we can to give it, everything that we can give that child the education and the financial support not to end up in jail as well. But sometimes the danger is people live in a certain world. They don't see anything different. But Mikkel saw something different. She saw a path from being a Detroit teen to becoming a celebrity stylist, started with encouragement from her mom and the drive to take any job necessary. Most were in fashion, though some were less glamorous. I'm also waiting tables at Red Lobster, and that money I'm really stacking and throwing in shoeboxes, you know, the regular way. <laughs> and, um, you know, I use that money. I save like $10,000, and I moved to New York City. And um, when I get to New York City... And you did that for two reasons, right? There's two reasons. My mom is in Danbury, Connecticut, the real orange, new black, and I'm in New York and I'm taking trains, you know, to commute over on the weekends to visit my mom. Mikkel's success as a professional dresser, working with everyone from Madonna to P. Diddy, isn't just inspirational. There's something very poetic about the fact that you chose to be a stylist and express yourself through your clothing and other people's clothing in so many myriad ways, and yet your mother is forced to wear the same outfit every day. Yeah. What do you make of that? that sort of irony. That's heavy, you know? It's very heavy that my mom gets up every day either with a khaki suit or a, a, um, a gray jogging suit. Mm -hmm. And everyone's the same as if they're, they're a number. And she has a number. And the numbers of people incarcerated in the United States are staggering. More than any other country, the USA has over two million people presently serving time in federal and state prison, a disproportionate number of whom are African American. These are facts that have the attention of our first black president, who's announced an intention to enact sweeping prison reforms, which would impact everything from sentencing guidelines to how inmates are treated, and has seen Obama commute 673 prisoner sentences, more than the past 10 presidents combined. And even more directly to the point, he made history by becoming the first sitting president to visit a federal prison where he spoke to a kind of case that may sound all too familiar. When we're looking at nonviolent uh, offenders, most of them growing up in uh, environments in which drug traffic is common, uh, where many of their family members may have been involved uh, in the drug trade. Uh, we have to reconsider whether 20-year, 30-year life sentences uh, for nonviolent crimes uh, is the best way uh, for us to solve these problems. He's been the first to, to do a lot, even to even visit a prison. And that's something that I'm really taken back by because we keep building them, but no president that's been in office has even had the decency to want to go see what it's all about. 
we keep building them, and they're actually a rather profitable institution exactly. in America. Yeah. So you would think presidents yeah. would want to. I mean, I've worked luxury retail. I, that's the only I can only take it back to fashion, and with going in luxury retail, they they do walkthroughs that, with their big money maker locations. So why wouldn't we do a walkthrough? And then we've got, you know, this isn't handbags. This is this is humans. Yeah. And in a way, to further the metaphor, your mother serving time at the flagship store. I mean, that's exactly. in Danbury. If you've seen Orange is the New Black, you know this is one of the premier prisons in the federal system. Exactly. You may have heard the term prison industrial complex, and it refers to what we're talking about now. There are corporations who profit off the record number of prisoners in our country by using them for cheap labor. It's a fact that's come under fire by human rights activists, adding even more fuel to Mikkel's fire to bring light to all her mother experiences and to agitate for her mother's clemency. And Mikkel's doing this by fusing these loves for her mother and for fashion into a line of t-shirts which bear her hashtag, Free Michelle West, which has been met with a stunning response. It's amazing. It's amazing. And people are buying my shirts all over the world. And bringing attention to your quest. Yeah, they're all screaming free Michelle West. At one point, I felt so alone, you know. You, you come up in these worlds and you have people and you think they're your friends and you think they're your family and they're not. So there's been times where I felt alone. And now it's like I have the whole world supporting me. The success of Mikkel's activism stands as an example of what you can accomplish when you set your sights on something beyond yourself. And we can see from where she gets that selfless spirit. I want to read you something that your mother wrote to me. I would love for you to talk to Mikkel about all the amazing things she has done, from working with people like Madonna and Beyonce on movie sets for movies like Sex and the City. All of this she's accomplished while having a mother serving life in prison since she was only 10 years old. Mikkel is living proof that you can still achieve your dreams no matter what. Mikkel was raised by her grandmother, so she grew up without both of her parents. And here you are. What do you feel when you hear that? I feel, I feel love. And it takes me back to that word friend. That's more than a friend there. That's, that's something special. Because my mom should, you know, she should be screaming free Michelle West, but she's not. I am. She's not. She's screaming, give Mikkel an opportunity. Let Mikkel have an opportunity. She's talented. She's good. She's my kid. She's good. Your mother has quoted Barack Obama repeatedly saying America is the only place in the world that gives you a second chance. That's why it's great. And here you are going to the White House while Barack Obama is still the President of the United States as an invitee of the White House and the President. How does that feel? What are you thinking? We're honored, you know, we're honored by this because there's a, there's a lot of stories. Not everyone's, you know, getting the invite. So I'm honored and I'm humbled by this and I just want to represent my, represent my mom properly and, you know, see her to the finish line. I made it, you know, I did it. I, I said, hey, I'm going to set an example for kids with incarcerated parents and I did it. And look at the things that I'm getting acknowledged. People are acknowledging me for me to get my invite, and it's amazing. And the hashtag Free Michelle West, what happens if your mother is ever free? We're gonna change that hashtag to Michelle West Free and keep going and mentoring people, you know, spread, telling our story and, and being an inspiration to people. That's what happens. So it would be from Free Michelle West Michelle West Free. Let's, let's hope and see. Yeah. The day after our interview, Mikkel flew to the White House for a trip which gave her the chance to discuss her mother's case with government officials and lawyers. During a phone conversation with me from prison, Michelle beamed with pride for all her daughter has accomplished. For over 20 years, these two have been an example of how unconditional love can transcend distance and prison walls, lift spirits, actualize dreams, and change the course of lives. At the moment, lawyers are preparing Michelle's papers to submit a formal request for clemency while President Obama is still in office. Could free Michelle West become Michelle West free? We'll wait and see.